Welcome back to What Are Nibs for General Disturbance. This is a Super Hellcat. It's a Tier 7 American turreted tank destroyer, a premium one. It's located on the south spawn of Muravanka Encounter, and this one is under the command of Comrade Sergei. Okay, game started, but his guns dropped, so... Oh, yes, he has loaded in. Well, the, um, the Hellcat... It's armed with a 90mm gun, but the original Hellcat, the standard one, actually starts the game with a 76mm gun, and you have to work your way up to get the 90mm. This tank was brought in as a reward for all those people who've been with the game for at least five years, and it gives you the 90mm gun straight away, but it actually puts you one tier higher than the standard Hellcat, which is tier 6. This is tier 7, which means it sees tier 9 opponents. And that makes it difficult for it to penetrate with that 90mm round because that will do 240 alpha, penetrating 167mm of armour. And he's got a APCR round which will go up to 210. Now that's quite a lot of penetration but those shells are expensive and he's only carrying 3, 7 HE rounds and 20 standard. So you don't get a whole lot of ammunition, only 30 rounds in total. And remember, those armor-piercing rounds, they only penetrate up to 167. And if he's up against tier 9 opponents, in fact, it's a tier 7 game, so he's top tier, it can be a problem. But in a tier 7 game, it should be a lot better. Well, they know that there's an MX-12 ton there because he's been spotted by our T-25-2. And he's disappeared from sight. He's way over there behind the water tower. Okay, the T-25 is now capping, and the Panzer IV-H has actually come into sight. Okay. But lovely first shot into the engine bay of the Panzer Mark IV-H. This guy's going to be dead with the next shot. Oh, and he is, but it's the KV-13 who get, takes the kill. Got a Tiger P moving up on the cap area. Over to the west, we've got a Covenanter, and he's tracked. Lovely shot, 232, high roll. Is that high roll? Is it 240? I think it's 240, isn't it? So that's a low roll. Yes, low roll. That one didn't hit the target. So two out of three shots penetrated so far. Two out of three ain't bad. So says the mighty meatloaf. Now, the enemy seems to have actually done well in the Magic Forest, and it looks like they might be coming up behind us. And he suddenly realised that, yeah, you look at the minimap often enough, you realise, oops, they managed to blow their way straight through our tanks in the Magic Forest, and now it's up to uh, Sergei to actually keep these guys at bay whilst we cap. He's using the bush mechanic now. He did fire, but he wasn't spotted. Oh, tracked him there, or rather hit the tracks. T-34 shielded... That one into the engine bay, 240, an average roll, but he was seen, and he'll need to pull back now. And there's an enemy Super Hellcat. I think he auto-aimed on almost to that one. Or is it manual aim, but just firing along the line of sight. Moving back up to this bush again. There's still some enemy out there, a P-43 and a Boogie, or Budgie as we're, I think, now intending to call them. Oh! There they are, the Budgie and the P-43. Nice shot. Actually, double bush there. Because the P-43 was in a bush when he was hit, so he wouldn't have seen Comrade Sergei. Lovely shot again. Leading shot. 239, low roll. Can you get this one in? Kill shot. Oh, just tracks him. Just tracks him. He's sitting behind the wreck now. Or Not going to help him, though. There you go. Nice shot. Nashorn appears. One shot, kill. And he's dead. The the budgie is still there somewhere. He's hiding in the bushes. In amongst the tree line. It's likely he does know that Comrade Sergei's here. But he just can't see him at the moment. If he did fire blind at the bushes here, I think we would probably see him. Which is why he's holding his fire. And... I thought for a second I saw 
a shell coming over it from the uh, from the east. I suspect the enemy RT might be over there. Okay, Budgie, Budgie, two sixty six, a high roll. Is he still there? Yes, he is. <laughs> He's dead. Okay, so they thwarted the enemy attack from that direction. But I do wonder, was I was I seeing the trace of an enemy RT shell coming over from the east? There is an enemy RT out there. It's a, a bishop. He might have gone into the magic forest. Maybe I was just seeing things. Oh, he took a round from an M10. Watch out, because those got 76mm guns with good penetration. Not as good damage as the Hellcat, but you don't want to get perforated by one too often. Because the Hellcat doesn't have much in the way of armour. It's built to be fast. Is he behind the church? I think he's behind the church. The Achilles, I think it's behind a house. Yeah, he, he needs to change position. He, in fact, he ought to go into the Magic Forest as quickly as possible and come up behind these guys because they won't be expecting a, a hit from that direction. We're still capping. But when the enemy's in this position, it actually does help them to be directly along that line so that they can shoot up the gap into the enemy. He's decided he is going to try and get behind them now. Outflank them. It's, it's always a good trick to outflank your enemy. I've done that in a few battles recently where I see an obstruction, the enemy's blocking our path forward, they've got good shots, I just flank around the outside, come up behind them and shoot them in the ass and yes, they get the message. Now he didn't go around enough to get the AMX 12 ton, he's a long way off in the distance but he should be able to see the Achilles if he moves up the tree line. I ducked back into the trees though to move up, oh, yes he's been seen, that's why. In fact, actually, it wasn't him. It was the Hellcat that saw him, and he's locked on. His first shot is a high roll. Gets a second one. It's a low roll. He took a damage shot from the Super Hellcat, but is he going to get his next one in? Yes. High roll again. The guy's a one shot. He takes one more round. He can afford to hit this guy now, and that's it. Got his third kill. So... He's now moving around behind the Achilles because obviously they know where he is. But I don't think they're actually going to come and get him because they're too worried about the cap at this moment. They'll stick around there, tr keep trying to shoot rounds into the cap area. He's done a nice little circuit, but now he can come up behind these guys and give them what for. And the Achilles is one shot. He's gone. There's just the M10 left. The M they did get resets. But he should be able to come at that M10 from the different angle. Now, I think he's actually looking for the RT. I don't think the RT is going to be this far away, to be honest, because he's a bishop. He's a short-range RT. He has to be fairly close to the action. There he is. You see? Has to be fairly close. One into his rear. He went for the uh, casement around the gun, which is, of course, the weak spot. He can lock on now. That's it. And that means there's only the M10 RBFM left. And he's gone balls deep basically now. <laughs> I have to use that term. He's gone right in there to try and stop the cap. I think he has got some resets. So he might have a defender. Now he's firing on the move. Which isn't recommended. Because obviously it is more difficult to get a hit. Unless you're stationary. Yes. That's the way to do it. That's the way you earn the money. All these song uh, references. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay, let's have a look at the end of battle stats. It's an ace tanker for Comrade Sergei in the Super Hellcat. I mean, boy, did he do well in this one. He got a spotter badge for spotting at least a 1,000 hit points of damage. A bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got 12. A duelist medal for taking two down two tanks who damaged him during the game. And a fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He ended up with five, just one short of getting a top gun. And he got a 5 for effect for doing more damage than the hit points to his own vehicle. He got a patrol duty for being the only one spotting at least 6 enemy tanks whilst they were damaged. A high caliber for dealing the most damage in the game. And, well, let's have a look at the team score for this one. Oh, easily the top. Look at that. 
he was the only one over 3,000 hit points of damage, 3,680 hit points of damage. The bishop managed 2,053. He must have been getting resets on the cap quite a lot of the time. And then the next high scorer was the KB13 with 1,462. When it came to kills, again, he had the highest number, five, one third of the enemy team. The next highest scorer is being the Nashorn, the M10, and the Bishop on the enemy team with three kills apiece. And when it came to base XP, yes, he's got the top in all three columns. He got 1,595. He's the only player to get over 1,000 base in that game, which is a nice little ace tanker. In fact, that's a good ace tanker because it's uh, near just under 1,600 experience points from that one. 670 went to the KB13. 594 went to the T67. And yes, look at the difference between those and that one. He really was working that Hellcat during that game to give them the result. 25 shots fired, 20 direct hits. So he only had five rounds of ammo left at the end of the game. 17 penetrations. He didn't all get all of them in, but he did get a good result. Two splash as well. Damage of 3,680 hit points, of which 1,623 were at more than 300 meters. Yes, those shots on the tanks that were coming up the tree line were at long range. Three shots received from the enemy. All three penetrated. Yeah, I'm afraid the armor on the Hellcat, the Super Hellcat, isn't as good as that. It's really only to, to smop, stop small arms fire. It's not to stop anything with a higher, higher caliber. So they are going to pen. Five enemy vehicles spotted, nine enemy vehicles damaged, five killed, and 1,949 hit points of spotting assist. On a free-to-play account, he earned 42,965 credits, got 21,483 from personal reserves, and total 64,448. <coughs> Excuse me. After repair and ammunition resupply, he took away a profit of 40,511 credits from the game. He picked up 1,595 base XP, got times two for the first victory, 319 because this is a premium vehicle, and took away 3,509 experience points altogether. So a very good game in the Super Hellcat. You don't see them all that often because this tank tends to end up in higher tier games. And when it does end up in a tier 8 or a tier 9 game, it's completely overmatched. And it's very difficult to actually get some damage. You are really basically playing defensively, but... Comrade Sergei was able to play this offensively against the enemy because he was able to make the best use of that 90mm gun. And even when he came up against his own kind in the uh, in the wood, the other Super Hellcat, he took the advantage over that guy and uh, bested him. If you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like and do subscribe to our channel, please. And thanks for watching.